Hi, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and today I want to review a USMLE practice question. Make sure to check out our other free educational videos at our YouTube channel, iMedical School. In addition, you can follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool and Facebook at iMedical School. Let's get to our eighth question in this video series. Below, there's a depiction of a normal pressure volume loop of the left ventricular cardiac cycle. How would digoxin affect this loop? What is the mechanism of action of digoxin? Take some time and think it over. Pause here while you figure out the answer. Now, let's go over the answer. To figure this question out, we need to understand how to interpret the left ventricle pressure volume loop. The x-axis of the graph represents the volume, and the y-axis represents pressures. Keep in mind the basic anatomy of the heart. The left atrium pushes blood past the mitral valve into the left ventricle, which then contracts and pushes blood past the aortic valve into the aorta. Now that we understand the broad strokes, let's look at the details of the pressure volume loop. Let's begin at point A. Point A is after blood has entered the left ventricle, from the left atrium, and now the mitral valve has closed. Filling of the left ventricle occurs in diastole, so the volume in the left ventricle at point A is called the end diastolic volume, or EDV. Point A also represents the beginning of systole. After the left ventricle is filled, the mitral valve is closed. At this point, the mitral valve and the aortic valve are closed. In segment one, the left ventricle starts contracting in a process called isovolumetric contraction, meaning contracting with a fixed volume. Imagine, this is like squeezing a filled water balloon. The pressure in the balloon will increase dramatically with the volume in the balloon remaining the same. Now, we reach point B, where the aortic valve opens. Once the aortic valve opens, this is like squeezing a water balloon, then releasing the opening of the balloon. The water inside will shoot out. This is what segment two shows. In segment two, the volume rapidly decreases as the volume of blood is ejected out into the aorta. The pressure actually rises during part of this segment because the left ventricle contracts even harder against a large volume of blood in the ventricle. As the ventricle empties, the pressure dissipates, since there is less fluid in the ventricle. At point C is when the aortic valve closes. Once the aortic valve closes, the ventricle relaxes, causing a sudden drop in pressure represented by segment 3. Segment 3 is called isovolumetric relaxation, since the muscle is relaxing with only a fixed volume present. Now we reach point D, which is the end of systole. Point D also represents the volume at the end of systole called the end systolic volume, or ESV. After point D, the mitral valve opens and the left atrium pushes blood into the left ventricle. The left ventricle fills very rapidly, represented by segment four. As the left ventricle becomes full and the left atrium muscle relaxes, the filling of the left ventricle slows down. Finally, we reach point A again, where the mitral valve closes. Since we have covered the details of the pressure volume loop, let's talk about digoxin and its effects on the heart. Digoxin has traditionally been used in congestive heart failure as an inotropic agent. An inotropic agent changes how strongly a muscle contracts. Digoxin is a positive inotrope, meaning it makes the heart pump harder and with more strength. Though digoxin was previously frequently used in heart failure, it currently is not a first-line drug given its use is associated with increased mortality. In addition, digoxin can be used for arrhythmias through an unknown effect on the parasympathetic system. Digoxin works by blocking a sodium-potassium ATPase channel. The sodium-potassium ATPase pumps two sodiums out of the cell, and three potassiums into the cell. This transporter requires ATP, or energy, to do this, as the channel is pumping these ions against their natural concentration gradients. Since digoxin inhibits the ATPase, 
the intracellular concentration of sodium increases. In addition, there's a sodium calcium exchanger that allows sodium to flow down its gradient and in exchange pumps calcium into the cell. As a result of the increased sodium in the cell, this causes a greater flow of calcium into the cell. With the greater flow of calcium into the cell, there's more available in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and more available for contractile proteins when the membrane depolarizes, resulting in a more vigorous contraction. Now, let's look at the effect of Jackson on the pressure volume loop. Here, we depict the normal pressure volume loop. Remember, the Jackson makes the left ventricle pump more vigorously. Like any pump, if the pump pushes harder, it'll push out more volume. The volume with each contraction of the heart is called the stroke volume. Stroke volume is the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. This should make sense as it is the volume at the end of filling minus the volume still present at the end of the ventricle contracting. Though end diastolic volume is the same as digoxin does not affect filling, but end systolic volume is decreased due to a greater contraction being produced, thus increasing the stroke volume. As a result of these changes, the pressure volume loop extends to the left, represented by C prime and D prime. In the end, remember that inotropes increase contractility and thus the stroke volume. An increase in stroke volume decreases the end systolic volume, extending the pressure volume loop to the left. It's really important to understand these pressure volume loops to understand basic cardiac physiology. Well, that was a review of the left ventricle pressure volume loops and our eighth practice question. If you like this video, give it a like, share this video with your friends and classmates, place any questions or comments down below, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and it's good to be back. <laughs>